Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Welcome to Philemon. Verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Prayer. Again, what a, what a prayer warrior Paul is. Always. 24 hours a day? I don't think so. But it's pretty darn where close when you look at prayer. Prayer should be whenever we got the moment and the time and the ability. Now we got a thing today in America. I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida, USA. And we can't pray in the schoolroom. Yes, you can. Let's say the teacher just handed me, this is my test. I'm at my desk, I'm in a schoolroom, public schoolroom, and I can't pray, all right? Here's my test. I prayed. I just asked God to help me, when God forgive me because it's not a test, but let me show you an example. Oh, my boss won't let me have any religion or anything like that. Won't let me do anything as far as Jesus or God. I can't pray. All right, you're at your work desk. I just ask God to bless the day and help me to do what I need to do. In God's honor, Jesus Christ, amen. Prayer is not always vocal. It can be also thought. It don't have to be kneeling. You find people in the Bible standing. You can be behind the wheel of your car. You can be working a drill press. You can be putting spark plugs in a car. You can be wiring someone's house. You could be doing a roof. You could be cradling a baby. You could be making a dinner for your family. You could be in the shower. You could be lying in the bed. It could be in the middle of the night and your spouse next to you is sleeping and you can't sleep. And you can pray to God without disturbing the person next to you. And it's like, no, I think I feel a sneeze coming, so forgive me if I do. It won't come out. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew it was coming. A lonely, retired saint could be very close to 24 hours. Maybe you're in a, a, a place where you, you're confined. A hospital room. Or you're in a convalescent care. You're in a rehab. You are in jail, and you can't go. You can't leave. There's nothing you can do, but you can pray. God has given us the gift of prayer for anybody, anywhere. Minus eyesight, minus hearing, minus the ability to speak, even minus the ability of brain power. And God has given us that capability that we can pray. I had a nurse. I was in a nursing home ministry for a short time and the person said well, I can't do nothing I, I can't do this I can't do that I'm stuck here I said well the church that we are in we have this event we have these events we meet this time this family is going through a difficulty this person it, it needs prayer that person I then gave him a prayer list off, off the church are you capable of being in this place, unable to do anything, unable to go anywhere? Are you capable of praying for these people throughout the day? Well, yeah. Even a person confined to bed is able to pray. Prayer is that great thing that God has given us. There's no cords. It's a cell phone that God has given from himself to the Christian. And it's the least of the tools used by Christians. So a, a lonely retired saint can pray. Save men in a hospital bed. 
There's much time for prayer if we put that sacrifice. And as I've already showed you, you don't have to have a public prayer. Attention, everybody, look at me. I know we can't pray, so let's pray. I'm going to pray. You don't have to act like an idiot. Matter of fact, Jesus condemns those who stand in the street corner and say, Hey, everybody, I'm going to pray. And Jesus rebukes the, you know, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He rebukes those prayers. Because they don't come from the heart. He rebukes the prayer that's out loud. You can pray to yourself. There are times, listen, my wife doesn't know when I'm praying. I don't know when she's praying. I don't know when my daughter prays. And there is those times that your prayer will encourage others. I remember a little boy spending my weekends at my grandparents' house. I remember seeing my grandfather kneeling down at his chair in his room every night, long prayer. A saved man. I remember that. My family and I, when we conclude our nightly Bible lessons, we end in prayer. My daughter and my wife see me pray for us, everything going on. When we get in the car. They don't know I pray. I don't know if they pray, but I ain't going to get in that car without prayer. And before we get to the street ministries, I'm praying on my way there. I'm praying the night before. I'm praying through the week. I'm praying for sick people. There are many people in our church that are on my prayer. I'm praying for a job. They're praying for me. You can pray in good health. You can pray in bad health. Coffee breaks. The red light. And I don't mean at the red light, oh, Lord God, please make it green. The always of verse 4 is as often as you are able. When the last time, when was the last time you sacrificed a moment of your time to ask God, to seek God, to thank God? You can't see it, but from where my cam, where my, my cam, uh, my computer, my laptop, I'm recording. It's looking at me. You can see my ugly face. Right next to that, there's a name of a child that I've been given to pray for. My Bible. I got marks in prayer. Let's see. What, let's see. Let me go a couple pages forward. Go a couple pages forward. Let's see here. I got. I got a name here. I don't, it's a Musabi Africa. I got a prayer here for Justin and Danielle. As I read my Bible, Malcolm, Jonathan, Ashley, Jordan, Nancy, Uriah. These are names I have written in my Bible as I'm reading my Bible, the Bears. So as I'm reading along my Bible, Hebrews chapter 10, Dave and Nora, the Bogarts. You can spend most of your day in prayer. It's really not that distracting if you put your heart to it. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing, without ceasing of the church unto God for him. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in prayers. There is a time in our lives that there should always be prayer without ceasing until God answers. Now we got that story in, in Luke. That judge that had no regard for God or man. And Jesus gives an, an illustration of a widow woman. She has a need. <coughs> Allergy. She has a need, and she keeps going to that judge. Please, please judge, please judge, please judge, please judge, please judge, please judge, please judge. And that judge says in himself, I don't care about God. I have no regard for God or man. I, I just want this woman to shut up. And I'm going to do what she wants just to shut her up. And then Jesus says, how well is our God in heaven, our Father, that we are his children? Will a man give a rock? Will a man give a child a serpent? Well, if men that are, are worldly and, sin, and sinners 
and give good things to their children, why not our Father in heaven? You ask not because you receive not. Because you ask for a minute. Some of the things we want are meant. They don't do us no good. They will not benefit God but the flesh. And then sometimes we, God, I didn't get that what I wanted while I was living on earth. And God said, because you never asked. A soldier out in the battlefield with a two-way radio will continue the radio headquarters for help to headquarters answers. I don't know. Blue Army to headquarters. Blue Army headquarters. Come, come on, headquarters. Answer. Blue Army headquarters. Come on. And he'll keep on trying until he gets those, hep, those gets headquarters to say, we need bombs. We need food. We need troops. And we need to go to God. God, we need you. And I met people so, oh, I don't pray for myself. Why not? Paul says to the churches, pray for us. The disciples, Jesus, teach us to pray. He doesn't give up after two or three times. And are we not again soldiers of Jesus Christ? Sometimes God will see, how much do you really want it? Prayer is an important thing. How else do you communicate with God? I'll write it down on paper. And who's going to deliver it to God? I'll call him on the phone. What's his phone number? See, we got a technology too much. We got these stupid phones we hold in our hands. God ain't going to reach you with a prayer life through a phone. You can't write him a letter. He won't get it. Post office may deliver anytime, anywhere, in any situation, but they can't deliver to God. Prayer is not mimicking or reading. It comes from a life and its troubles for you and all. How many people in that World Trade Tower, one or two, had time for the Lord's Prayer? Prayer beads or a Hail Mary when those airplanes crash in those towers. Oh, we're on fire. There are flames and everywhere. We can't get out of Where's my bees? Where's my... No, it's... Oh, God! God, help! When Peter steps out on that water to walk on the water, he cries out, God, help! I'm thinking. There's no rehearsal in prayers. And don't believe these Hollywood garbage movies that their tragedy is about to have an old... Hell, Mary full of scrapes and all that and all that. No, it don't happen in real life. And if you got a tragedy in your life, you're not going to text OMG. In a tragedy in your life, you're not going to cry, Oh, Buddha, help! Because you know those gods can't help you. When it comes to tragedy, when it comes to seriousness of life, it's not a prayer that you can read. It's a prayer that comes from the heart. God, I have a need and I may not even know what to say. I may not even know how to say it. I just have a need. It's serious. It comes down to, oh God. And again, like I said, there was, there was a Hollywood movie where the actors did. He's quoting Hail Mary. Rubbish! He's burning in lava. And he's going to say, Hail Mary. That's garbage. You're going to cry out, Oh God, God. I bet you even in trials and troubles and tribulations, seriously, I bet you an atheist has even reached out to God. Look at Paul's prayer for the Romans. For God is my witness. Whom I serve with my spirit in the, in the gospel of his son. That without ceasing I make mention of you always in prayers. Not the Corinthians. That's interesting. Second Corinthians. Then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. Praying for getting back to God. What a church that the Corinthian church was. He didn't pray for the, for the first Corinthian letter. They were wickedness. They were, oh man, trouble, problem. So you know what the lie of the sea in modern church is would be for, for Paul today? He wouldn't pray for it. 
We're so great. We're so great with God. We're rich. We're wonderful. We will have no need to go oh, by and pray for you guys. He'd give you a tongue lash. He said, get right. Get that guy out of that church. Get right with God. And if I show up, boy, you don't want me to show up. And when they got correct, when they got right, in 2 Corinthians, I pray for you. You would make the Apostle Paul sick in this church age, and he wouldn't pray. Our church age today, like the Corinthian church, the, the first letter, the epistle, is a sickening church that you can't pray for. How do you pray for a church that's got Roman relics in it? I mean, eggs and Christmas trees. How do you pray for a church that's got magic in it? How do you pray for a church where there's lying? How do you pray for a church when they're doing wrong? How do you pray for a church when they ain't got the right Bible? How do you pray for a church when they got alcohol? How do you pray for a church when they got the wrong music? How do you pray for that? Paul wouldn't. He did not pray for the first Corinthian church. I don't mean the second, the, the epistle. To the Ephesians, cease not to give thanks for you. Make a mention of you in my prayers. The Philippians, always in every prayer of mine for you, for all making requests with joy. Colossians, we give thanks to God and the Father for our Lord Jesus Christ. Praying always for you. Thessalonica, we pray thanks God to you always for you all. Making, turn page, mention of you in prayers. Wherefore, also we pray always for you, Timothy, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Paul had a busy life in prayer. So should we not have one also. When's the last time you prayed for somebody besides yourself? When's the last time you shed prayers in prayer to God for someone else? When's the last time you said... Oh, the preacher preaches about money and tithing. When was the last time you sacrificed your seconds, your minutes, maybe hours, in prayer for somebody else? Though, so, would you sing, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer? I haven't prayed once this week, but sweet hour in prayer. How many people sing that hymn and never prayed an hour? You know it's hard to pray an hour? You know, I, I tried that once. When, I, when that, that hymn comes up, Lord God, forgive me, I have not prayed an hour. Are we prayer ready enough that in doing nothing period in our lives, that God will give us in our life to use it for prayer rather than daydream. Oh, nothing's going on here. That doctor's taking three hours. Oh, I wish that doctor heard that old magazines. Can you pray? Oh, come on now. One register's open, 25 registers, and one register's. And can you pray? Can you? Or do we, me, occupy our time complaining and griping? What do we do? Where will our works lie the judgment seat of Christ? Praying or griping and complaining? There are times that God has given our life called nothing time. Nothing to do. And yet those nothing times in our life should be given to God for prayer. And yes, for us, for me, myself. And then me praying for others. And there are sometimes I don't even understand. It's like, Lord God, this person's name. Just the name. Lord, this person has gotten terrible news to family. They're destroyed. I know they are, but Lord God, can you do something in that family to make it better? Lord, this man is sick. Heal him. Take care of him. Help him. This woman, is, she, she's upset. She's got problems. Help her. Lord, I've got troubles. 
Lord, if anything, help me to make my checkbook more balanced and right and correct and that you have me spend what you want me to spend it on. How about that one? It's interesting that the Holy Spirit recorded these prayers. Maybe there is, and I say maybe, but maybe there's a book listing all our prayers. Now, will our prayers be a condensed book? Or will it be that 14-foot shelf of books? Whoever records the books, I know God's a great recorder because you can't read numbers without seeing that God's a great recorder. Now, whoever's recording what we do when we live, how is that person when it comes to our prayer life? Who's ever recording that? Are they, man, we should just, oh, shit, can't keep up. Or is he just sitting back with his, he's up in the chair, he's got his legs up on the desert. Oh. Oh, this guy's easy. How is our prayer life? What is the recording? You don't think God records prayers? I just gave you a whole paragraph of what was recorded by Paul. Don't you know that Psalms is a prayers and hymns? Don't you see when Moses spoke to God that is recorded? That's a prayer. The prayers that people went to Jesus. Jesus, I don't want to be a leper. Jesus, I want my eyesight. Jesus, this kid has a devil. Je those are prayers. And they are recorded. And I believe, and I could be wrong, our prayers are being recorded. What will they be like? Will other Christians be amazed on how much you pray for them? Will other Christians in your church be amazed on how much they spent more prayers on you than you did on others? And that little nobody ever in the church that they don't even know who they are and they don't even care who that person is and they'll probably find out that person was the prayer warrior that kept that church going. How many pages will it fulfill? How many pages of prayer was just on self? Not Paul. That you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. See, he's asking for prayer. With all praying also for us, he's asking for prayer. That God would open unto us a door of utterance. Brethren, pray for us. Yes, Paul also asked for prayer for himself and the work of God. You don't get it if you don't ask. And as James said, yet ye have not because you ask not. I don't know why God's not working with me. I don't know why God's not working with, with what we're doing. Are you praying for other people and what they're doing? Well, no. You're not. Then how do you expect God to answer your prayer if you're not praying for others? Well, nothing happens in my life. I, I don't I don't get nothing. <laughs> do you ask other people to pray for you? Well, I wouldn't do that. Well, then you're not going to get it. No one prays for me. Have you told them to pray for you? No. Then what do you want? Well, if you want to raise from your boss, you'll march right into the, oh, I want to raise. So, prayer is important. Prayer is the communication that we have to God. And as I said, the man on the battlefield, as we are soldiers, there's only one way for him to get back to H HQ headquarters. And this modern age is that is that two-way radio. A letter may not make it. A letter may get, the person carrying it may get killed, may get shot, may get blown up. That letter may fall into the hands of the enemy. But we have been given a cordless means to meet with God. We, the Bible says, can approach the throne of God with grace and ask him. We've got Jesus Christ is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is making intercessions for us. We are to pray for others. We are to pray for ourselves. We are to go to others and say, I need prayer. We're supposed to be to gather together in prayer. 
And we'll find out the judgment seat of Christ that our failure, the failures in our life have been a result because of lack of prayer. The wrong motive to prayer. Not even praying at all. Not having the proper heart. <coughs> One thing that Paul shows us. We pray for others. And then we ask for prayers. And I don't think the Apostle Paul would write something to say something that he wasn't involved with. Now, I know a few people. They'll say, well, when somebody says, come up to me, can you pray for me? I pray at that moment because I'm going to forget later. Wow. Really? That's kind of interesting. I got people, I, I'm, a, I'm a very terrible man when it comes to names. I say, Lord, you know those people, and you know their names, even though I don't know their names. You can't remember a condition that someone comes to you and say, hey, will you pray for me? And you can't remember that beyond 24 hours? Where's your heart? You get, your, you get yourself praying for that person, get yourself praying for that person, get, then you'll remember. You'll remember. Does your church have a prayer list? Go up to your pastor and say, Pastor, can I type out, can I write out, and then mimeograph or photocopy? Can I just print out a list that the church can take with them every week, every month, and just people's names and conditions and for prayer? Some people may not know because they may have missed that service. They may have missed that request being made. No. But in that event, if that's put on paper, if somebody can pick it up and say, oh, okay. Emails. Actually, you know, you can use Facebook for prayers. Especially if you got a lot of Christians that are true Christians on Facebook. You can type in Facebook. Listen, Facebook is not always that bad. My Facebook is always for God. And the edification for Christians to grow and those that are not saved that know Jesus Christ saved. And that as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I put on there, as a Christian, I have needs. I have prayers. And not always do I always put my name, which I do pray. Hey, I got this prayer request. I got this event. I got a job interview pray for me I will put hey this person I know needs prayer that person I know has prayer. and I only put their first name I don't give any other name or there's a man in the church or there's a woman in because they may not like it show them respect but if you got true Christians on your Facebook or Twitter whatever you want to have put your prayers out put their prayers out you'll be remarkable I've been married twice. My first wife died of cancer. My wife right now has serious medical conditions. You realize there are countries right now I've never even heard of. There are people I never met, and I know they're Bible-believing, born-again Christians. All over this world, through Facebook. Rotten, miserable Facebook. That, that devilish Facebook. And they prayed for us over the years. They're praying for us now. There's no job here for me. They're, they're, they're my wife's health. My health. And there are people that are praying right now through Facebook and work. There is no excuse. I don't think God will take any excuse when we lack prayer. When there is no prayer. Do you realize, and we'll close, but do you realize that Jesus is God, correct? And God is Jesus. Yes, he is. We're not going to go that battle. But God is Jesus and Jesus is God. And Jesus had to pray to the Father also. Now, Jesus Christ prayed. 
Get off your high horse and you get brain. How's that? We all need to pray more and even more. 